Hello my friends, Mina Geek here. I get it, you have an unhealthy desire to own a computer with Windows XP, so you can play classic games from the 2000s. That's awesome, life's too short to miss out on such an experience, get it, experience? Well, if you like bad jokes and want that Windows XP sweet milk, stick around for what I'm about to share. Now, I don't know what level of knowledge each of you has. Some of you have probably forgotten more about computers than I'll ever know. Good for you. Some of you are just starting out with this hobby. Good luck. And some are like me, somewhere in the middle, pretending to know more than we actually do. But let's get started. There's no definitive answer to the question what's the best computer for XP, because the question in itself is nonsensical. That's why I'm going to propose a computer build that meets the following criteria. You can play all games between 2000 and 2006. The components are cheap and easy to find. The computer is stable and with minimal compatibility issues. I recommend an Intel Core 2 platform on socket 775. The reasons are simple. You can find Core 2 processors dirt cheap, they're super fast for Windows XP and they run cool and quiet. It's best to look for a combo, motherboard, CPU and RAM. But if you only find a motherboard and a CPU, that's fine also, the rest are cheap anyway. Look for a motherboard with these chipsets and be mindful of whether it uses DDR2 or DDR3 memory. For CPUs, anything from the Core 2 Duo E6600 and up or Core 2 Quad Q6600 upwards will do. 2GB of RAM should be ok, but you can also use 4GB, even if Windows will only recognize 3.2GB. I'll be using 2GB. The next crucial point, the graphics card. Let the debate begin. GeForce 4 from 2002, GTX 750 from 2014, you can even use a GTX 960 from 2015. That's the charm of Windows XP, you can use almost anything. For games from 2000-2006, I recommend an NVIDIA 9000 series, like the 9600 GT or the 9800 GT or even a 250 GTS, basically a 9800 GTX. And from ATI something from the HD 4000 or HD 5000 series. Each has its quirks. ATI cards run hot. Nvidia cards might fail faster, but that's part of the retro charm. I'm going to use this 9800 GT. For storage you can get a second hand hard drive, a 500GB new hard drive or even an SSD, your choice. An SSD will be faster, but I only have hard drives in my old systems and I'm fine with it. Choosing the power supply is a bit more complicated. I use second hand power supplies and take the risk, but I don't recommend that for you. Get a decent new power supply, one with bronze certification from a reputable brand and that should do the job. For the display you can buy a 2000s era LCD non-wide screen. You'll find plenty of 19 inch LCDs. I use a 19 inch LCD from the mid-2000s with a DVI cable that goes straight from the graphics card to the display and it's all fine and dandy. This video is more for beginners. If you want me to make a video where I discuss these aspects in more detail, not just the display but components and operating systems, let me know in the comments and we'll see. Thanks. Let's start with a classic game from 98, although it's the enhanced edition from GOG, Baldur's Gate 1, a 2D isometric game. I've wandered around and chatted for a little bit with these fine folks and everything seems ok. I don't have the CD version. It would have been interesting to see if it works on this setup since GOG probably included some optimizations and legal hacks. The game that drives me nuts every time I'm playing it because the protagonist jumps around whenever I press any directional key, he moves like Jar Jar Binks. Aliens vs Predator 1 runs fine. Now for all games I'm using 16x anisotropic filtering, 4 sharper textures and 8x or 16x anti-aliasing to eliminate all jaggies. Quake 3, which runs well on anything, doesn't even need mentioning. The only problems I had with Quake 3 were on Windows 98 due to OpenGL driver issues. In the top left corner there are some stats. Temperatures for the CPU and GPU, usage percentages and memory usage for the system and the video card. The GPU stays around 60 degrees and the game uses about 15% of the video card. It uses 98MB of video memory out of 512MB available on the 9800GT. The CPU stays at 62 degrees 
and system RAM usage is around 650 megabytes. Screamer 4x4, the GOG version, had issues with visual glitches on both Direct3D and OpenGL. This might be because newer drivers, I'm not sure, and only worked with Glide. But Glide only supports 800x600, but at least it works. The CD version of Max Payne runs perfectly and it uses the system's resources pretty well. The video card sometimes hits over 90% usage because I didn't enable VSync, which means the game pushes the hardware to its limit, resulting in 200 plus FPS. Mafia, a game from 2002, runs at 60 FPS. Interestingly, the game barely uses the CPU. Before it stayed at 60 degrees, but now it dropped to 46, with CPU usage around 10% maximum. The video card isn't used extensively either, only 20%, but Mafia uses a lot of video memory, 200 megabytes. There were no 256 megabytes video cards in 2002, if I'm not mistaken. Vice City, another gem from 2002. In this game, always keep VSync enabled. The game has a frame limiter, which you should disable to avoid being stuck at 30 FPS, but enable VSync in the graphics card settings to avoid issues when the FPS goes over 60. For such games, having a powerful XP system is worth it, as you can use high resolutions and high anti-aliasing, and the games will still run smoothly. Playing Vice City on a Core 2 and 9800 GT is like taking a Ferrari to buy bread. Totally unnecessary, but it feels amazing. MSI Afterburner doesn't work with Dungeon Siege, but that's okay. I can tell you that the FPS is excellent. You might see the in-game FPS in the top left. It fluctuates and has some stutters, but that's because the engine. Handling many textures, objects, effects and transparency is not that easy for a 2002 game engine. Heroes 4, a 2D game, runs perfectly. It's a joyful, relaxing game that doesn't worry itself with frame rate resolutions or settings. The only setting you need in Heroes 4 is sound, as the sound and the music are your best friends in this game. I hadn't noticed until now that Neverwinter Nights uses OpenGL. The game fully utilizes one of the CPU's two cores, staying around 100% most of the time. It's good. I have the resources, you'd better use them properly. The CPU stays at 60 degrees because I'm using a stock cooler. A better cooler would probably keep it at 50 degrees. Playing Serious Sam with VSync at 60 FPS feels awful, sluggish and imprecise. But at 200 plus FPS, it's smooth as silk. The video card works hard, nearly 100%, and reaches 70 degrees, which is okay for this card. Nvidia says the maximum is 105 degrees, really? Even your soul will melt at those temperatures. Speaking about your soul, here's a game where the developers put their heart and soul into it, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, a wonderful game, supposedly, which I still haven't played properly. But what I have played properly is Warcraft 3, everywhere, on every machine, from 20 years ago to 2 days ago. This game is smooth and runs perfectly, pure enjoyment. I'm in the campaign now, with few units on the screen, but trust me, it will run well on this system no matter what, because the CPU is powerful enough and the game needs a strong CPU when having a lot of units on the map. Justice will be done. If Doom 3 runs ok, everything will. And it does, at 60 FPS because the engine is capped. The video card isn't stressed at all, 20-30% usage, and the CPU is at 50 degrees. It does eat a lot of video memory though, using 357 megabytes out of the 512 megabytes, but we're good. Another game from 2004 that looks fantastic at maximum settings, Underground 2, the CD version. All games have run without any issues so far, except Screamer 4x4. So, my recommendation stands. These components are decent and correct. What do you guys think? 
Thank you all for watching, and until next time, have fun with Windows XP and be nostalgic.